All right, today we are getting into the hard part about electrostatics to begin with. And what we're going to do is, by integration, we're going to find the electric field of a couple of different things. We're not going to get into number one today. That is a, a uniformly charged straight wire. Today what we're going to look at is a circular arc of charge. We're going to look at the electric field from a circular arc of charge. It's tough. So let's just get into it. Basically what we want is to find the electric field at the center, this would be the center of the circle, of this arc of charge, um, which is great. Now in general what we use for our electric field is E equals KQ over R squared. This gets tricky though, because I don't have a single point charge, I have a distribution all the way across. So I can't look at it like Q. What I can do is take this arc of charge and take a slice of it. And that slice I'm going to call DQ. So I'm no longer looking at the full form uh, of Gauss's law, I'm looking at a differential piece of it. So instead of KQ over R, it's KDQ over R squared. Or we're talking about a differentially small piece of our charge. And this is where things got, are going to get a little bit tricky. So before we jump into finishing this out, let's talk about the relationship between the total charge. Let's say this thing has a total charge of plus Q. We're going to look at the relationship between the total charge that we have here and my differentially small piece of charge. Okay. Now, looking at this, we have uh, an arc of charge, radius r, and it's going from, let's say it has an angle here of theta, and then down here, it's, it's a negative theta. So we have a solid angle of 2 theta, arc of charge of radius r. So what we have with our relationship between dq and q is that q is the integral of dq. My total charge is all the little bitty pieces of q added up together. That's all dq means, a tiny sliver of charge. If I add up my infinite pieces of that, uh, then we're good to go. But <clears throat> things get complicated because dq is not just equal to dq. Let's look at what's going on. dq is an infinitesimally small piece of length. We'll call it dl. But it's the total charge density, the linear charge density of the thing, which is q over, and we'll call it the total length of my wire. L. Now, this thing right here, linear charge density, this is going to come up a bunch, is lambda. Its total charge over total length. Uh, so really for our dq, we would say dq is equal to lambda DL. That's all the time, not just for this situation. All the time. Now, that's still not going to help me out so much because I don't know how DL works. This is a circular arc. Okay, so we have a tiny, tiny little piece of arc length. Arc length in general, L is equal to the radius times theta. So if we take that down here and really extrapolate it out, dq is this lambda, total charge over total length, times my radius, times a tiny, tiny, tiny piece of my angle, d theta. That's how we're going to define my little bitty piece of dq. Uh, so we're going to do some cleanup over here. Do, 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 do. So, 
as we look at this thing, we have a tiny, tiny piece of charge, dq. Uh, since we're talking about a line, it's lambda times dl, and because it's an arc, dl in this case is r times a differential piece of my angle. We're still talking about the center of my arc and we're still talking about a solid angle of 2 theta right there. So this is our starting point. dq is equal to lambda r d theta. Now um, we're going to go ahead and integrate that to get what total q is. That's an important thing. So the first thing we're going to be doing is integrating that function to get our total charge in terms of our given parameters. So, we know that Q is equal to the integral of DQ, which means we now have the integral, that, that freaked out on me, sorry. We now have the integral of lambda, a constant, R, a constant, times d theta. And we're going from, let's say we integrate, we start adding up here and we end up down here. We're going from, um, well, we can say 0 to 2 theta, we can say negative theta to positive theta. Either way, we're adding up every little bit of that angle till we get the entire arc in there. We've taken into account the whole angle. So, the nice thing about this is, say q equals, we can pull out all of our constants. Lambda is a constant, r is a constant. So we've got lambda times r times the integral from negative theta to theta of d theta. This is one of the easier situations we've got. The integral of d theta is theta. I add them all together, I get my whole angle. So what I've got is lambda times r times theta minus negative theta. Or my total charge is lambda times r times 2 theta. And this is exactly what we would expect. r times 2 theta gives me this entire length. I would know how long it is. Lambda tells me the charge per unit length, that's going to tell me the total charge on this thing. Very simple process. Easiest way to integrate dq. This is how we determine our total charge. So I'm going to write that down here, just so we know. Total charge q is equal to lambda times r. So 2 lambda times r times theta. Now, let's get to the meat of this part that is gross and disgusting and it's going to make you cry a little bit. Um, we want the electric field. Okay, Electric field at the center of our arc. It will be again at the center of our arc of charge looking at this tiny piece of DQ. That tiny piece of DQ is going to give me a tiny bit of electric field and for now we can say that that differential piece of the electric field is equal to k times dq over that total radius squared. That's, that's just Coulomb's law for that. Now, we do have to take into consideration the symmetry of the problem. The symmetry of the problem says I got another piece of dq down here it's going to give me another piece of de and, and these two de's have y sections and those y sections are going to cancel each other out. <clears throat> so that really all that we can deal with for my DE is DE in the x direction. Now looking at that angle this is the angle that we're dealing with. Okay, This is my theta to begin with. So, dE in the x is equal to all of this, k dQ over r squared times 
the cosine of what angle, whatever angle we happen to be at. Okay. Now, well, we'll get to that later. So, my total electric field is really just going to be adding up all of my electric fields in the x direction. So, problem is, every time I change dq, I change cosine theta. So what I need to do is substitute in for dq something that is in terms of theta. So de in the x direction is equal to uh, k times lambda times the radius of my circle times the cosine of theta times d theta. Now everything's in the same language between cosine theta and d theta. And we proceed. That goes away. We're going to integrate both sides to get our total electric field. All my little, all these little DEs and the X added together gives me the total electric field at that point because of symmetry. And I have the integral of uh, K lambda times cosine theta over R into D theta. And what we need are limits on this. And again, as we go throughout the entire thing, here to here, we're going from negative theta to theta. So we pull out everything that is not a constant. I'm sorry, that is a constant. K doesn't change, lambda doesn't change, and that R doesn't change as I go to different angles. I have the integral from negative theta to theta of cosine theta d theta. Well, that's a simple integral. We can all do that. So, we have k lambda over r times the sine of theta from negative theta to theta. Now, once we apply our limits, the electric field at the center is going to be k lambda over r times 2 sine of theta. That's my electric field at the center. And because of symmetry considerations, that's pointing in the positive x direction because of how the ring is. That's how we find the electric field. Another thing that we might need to know is the electric potential. The electric potential at the center. We know in general that the electric potential from any charge is K Q over R, just integrating the electric field. So what we're going to do is take this and put it into differential form. For every little piece of DQ I have a DV at the center. So DV is equal to K DQ over R. Well, let's plug in what we have for dq. We're just going to add them all together. The nice thing again about the potential is that it does not matter uh, where we are. Symmetry is unimportant because it's not a vector. Nothing's going to cancel out. So my potential, let's do this in red, my differential piece of potential is k times lambda times r times d theta over R. Before we even start, those R's go away. Now, I integrate both sides. This one goes from negative theta to theta. That gives me my total potential at that point is equal to K lambda on the integral of D theta giving me from negative theta to theta, giving me, giving me, um, giving me k times lambda times 2 theta. Which, if we compare that with q, really is just k times my total charge q over r. When I plug in that q, the r's go away. Which is really nice 
for potential, really, at this point, it's as if all of the charge of all of my rod, Q, uh, were sitting R away. It doesn't have really anything to do with that distribution. Now, if we move from the center, it's going to change. But we're not concerned with that. This is the simplest example that we're going to look at. 